Okay, hello. What I said I was going to do next was to show you um, a way to do the shaker pocket. Now, what I've got here are three um, different books that I've made. This was probably the very, very first one. Um, as you can see, it is the, you know, the, the one that we've just done. But inside, what I've done just to add a bit of interest here is I've actually added an acetate sheet. That progressed um, from the book from that book onto this one where I made a shaker pocket okay so there so what I'm going to do now because you will see that in my current book and the book that you've made there's actually a little bit of a gap here between where we've put the flappy thing and the um, first page there's quite a big space there and what I'm going to do with mine is I'm going to make another shaker pocket to go in there but I'm going to do it slightly differently. I do have a fuse tool that I use and I love, uh, but not everybody does. Um, but I think everybody likes shaker pockets because they're just so darned pretty and full of sparkle. Um, so I'm going to show you another way to do it. Now I'm going to sew mine on my sewing machine. You can absolutely hand sew it as well. And if your hand sewing isn't tidy, don't worry, because the way that I'm going to do this one, um, I'm going to show you that actually that doesn't matter at all. So to actually make my shaker pocket, what I want is some sort of clear plastic. Now I'm going to use um, one of these, which is an old um, pocket from a ordinary um, D-ring scrapbook binder. You can use that. I mean, I like this because the plastic is quite thick, but you can use um, plastic from packaging. You can use plastic from... Um, you know the things that you, what kind of what you call them you know like file folders the ones that you put into your ordinary files um but for this this one i'm actually going to use uh this this pocket here from a, a, a i think it's project life d ring so the first thing i'm going to do is actually just work out exactly how big i want my shaker pocket to be now when you come to actually glue it on here if you're going to use just plastic there are difficulty shall we say in making sure that the plastic adheres permanently to the um, paper you can use double-sided red tape it's not the best thing in the world uh, glossy accents certainly works quite well but I'm actually going to cover mine with paper and I'll show you what I mean so what I need to do first is just work out roughly how big I want my pocket to be now my pages are seven and a half inches by four and a half inches so I'm thinking I'm going to cut my um, clear pocket down to that. So that's seven and a half by four and a half. So I'm just going to go and grab my trimmer and I'm just going to cut this down. Now I'm going to use this to my advantage because there are already um, two sides essentially done here. So let me just measure that. That's going to be four and a half. But actually, I'm going to do it slightly smaller. So I'm going to do it four and a quarter. I'm just going to take that edge off there. Let's have a look. By seven and a quarter. Okay, and that's going to be the first part of my shaker pocket. Now that's already been closed on two sides, so that's nice and easy, but I'm going, going to want another one. So I'm just going to cut that again. I'm going to cut this edge off here because it's just getting in the way. And I'm going to cut it four and a quarter. By... seven and a quarter and just to double check I'm just going to absolutely make sure that that is going to fit into the space that I want it to which is just there and that's spot on perfect so the first thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to sew I am going to use my machine so you'll just have to hold on a tick uh, while I just plug it in hold on here's one I made earlier
Okay, now this isn't overly tidy, but that's actually not going to matter a bit. So I'm just going to tie these ends off just to make it secure. And what I'm going to do next, actually, is just decide um, what sort of sequins I want in my little book, in my little shaker pocket. So I've got some here that I've already um, looked at my oh, pockets everywhere that I've looked at the papers for. So just to try and get some some colours halfway right. So I can see that these aren't too bad. They're quite quite close to the papers that I've used. So I'm just going to get some handfuls just sprinkle them into my pocket until I think I've got enough I'll add a few of these white translucent ones oh probably far too many and some green it is really difficult to get hold of green sequins, you wouldn't believe it. Probably that darker one. Let's have a look. Okay, and when I'm happy that I've got enough in there, that should probably do the trick. What I'm going to do is just close that up and sew that back down. to seal it. Right now, as I said, this isn't at all pretty. I'm not worried about that at the moment. I just wanna make sure that my, um, my pockets are sealed. So I'm going to go and do the same with the other one now. Right, now I want to make sure I've probably got about the same in both. It's not far off. So, I'm going to put my sequins away. Because I certainly don't want them spilling all over the floor. And I'm just going to do that final bit of sewing. Okay, so I know that the size of my papers are um, the size of my pages are seven and a half by four and a half inches, but I'm going to need a little bit extra at one end to actually attach it to the spine of the book. So I'm going to cut out four pieces of paper that are eight inches by four and a half inches.
and then what I'm going to do is just as a guide for myself really more than anything else just so I know where I'm working I'm actually going to score them all at half an inch on the eight inch side so I'm just going to score that at half an inch on the eight inch side but that really just as, acts, acts as a guide for me so that I know where I'm actually going to be attaching it to the book. Okay, uh, let me just double check that my sizings are right. Let's have a look. I'm just going to fold that just so that I can see. Yeah, that fits on perfectly there and that will fit inside. Okay, good stuff. So what I need to do now is I actually want to make some apertures in these so that my shaker pocket will uh, will show through. But it's actually going to tidy up the corner. So basically what we're going to do is make a window in each of them. So the way I'm going to do that is I am going to find myself a mat. And I'm going to draw a border of an inch, I think, probably, all the way around there. I'll just find myself a pen and I'm going to mark, actually I'm going to mark three quarters of an inch because I think that will just give me a little bit more to see. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my knife, which I put somewhere safe this morning, and I'm just going to cut that aperture out. Okay, so here's my score line. There's my frame. And let's just make sure that that is going to fit on there, which it will. And as you can see, that means that all of the um, messy uh, stitching that I had all around the set out outside is tidy. So I'm just going to cut the rest of those out. Okay, so what I've done is I've cut out the apertures in each of the um, the pieces to go around the shaker pockets and I'm just adding some of the red double-sided tape and I'm not always a great lover of tape but in this instance, to get it to stick, I think this is probably our best option. So I'm just going to attach it on the back side of my um, my frame and I am butting it up as close as possible to the edge and I've done that on each one of my frames so the next thing I'm going to do is just take off the red backing
I'm going to get my shaker pocket. I'm going to make it as flat as possible. And I'm going to lay it down on my frame so that none of my stitching is actually showing through. Okay, so there you go. I'm going to take the backing off another one of the frames. But before I lay this down, I'm going to want to make sure that I've got a really good adhesion all the way around. So I'm just going to find my glue, which I've lost. Oh, this one will do. And I'm just going to add some glue all the way around the edges here. Some down there. And I'm going to really carefully lay this on top, making sure that it lines up perfectly. You could really do with an extra pair of hands here. Okay. And there is my shaker pocket. Now where we've uh, made the fold, that's actually where it's going to attach inside our book. So I will probably pop it there. I'm just going to put some wet glue. Onto my paper. I'm going to line that up make sure it sits flush and I'm going to glue that down so that when I close my book it actually isn't in the way of any of my pages but I do have my shaker pocket and I'm going to do the same at the back. Now you can always add on to this. You could add some flowers. You could add, um, you know, some of your die cuts, whatever it is with the paper that you're using. But it just gives another little bit of added interest to your book. And so I'm going to do the same at the back um, there as well. But I have just used vellum. I've just used um, printed acetate. It's entirely up to you. You could just use pattern paper. You could not do it at all. Entirely up to you. Anyway, what I'll do is I will take some photos of the finished book and I will post those up for you as soon as possible. So thank you very, very much for joining me. Um, I really hope that you enjoyed making this book. I really like this one um, with these little autumnal papers. Um, I've just added some um, wood cuts down the side uh, and a bit of ribbon just to add a bit of interest. And um, on to the next class. Thank you very much. Bye bye.